Hello, Atta. Nice to see you again. Today we're going to hey, be Hey, Josh. And I'm really excited for that as well. So, um, how's it going? Really good. How are you? Doing well. Doing well. Yeah. What's the weather like in crazy Colorado? It is It is cold. Yeah. Yeah. Cold. Well, middle of the day, actually, it's warming up pretty good. It's starting to feel like September during the days, but there's snow on the ground already. So, yeah, for sure. Okay. Well. Awesome. Well, welcome listeners as well. Um, we're happy to have you all here and hoping to have a rich conversation uh, regarding CBD, what it is, how it works in the body and why it's such a unique and special thing for us to consider adding into our um, regimen, as well as some uh, other things you could do to kind of emulate what CBD does for the body as well. So Atta, if you'd like to, I would love for you to kind of dive into what is CBD? What does the acronym even stand for? Yeah, so um, it stands for cannabidiol, and um, but you know, might as well just call it CBD. It's easier. And um, but what's really fascinating is, um, you know, in in the field of anatomy, physiology, and medicine, um, people started studying the human body hundreds of years, thousands of years ago. People have been like curious, how's this work? You know, what do we do to live in these bodies and you know, the health practitioners going back a long time in ancient cultures, uh, they did their research. And of course, you know, Western science obviously started doing its research and from dissecting bodies to just observing functionalities with living bodies. And they discovered the immune system and of course, you know, the circulatory system and then, you know, the nervous system, um, the skeletal system is the most obvious, right? But so going back a long time, all these systems were discovered except which one? The most recent is the endocannabinoid system. It was discovered, first discovered the CB1 receptors in the endocannabinoid system were discovered in 1988. And then again, there was like another receptor, the CB2 receptors were discovered in like 1991 or two, I forget. And then, you know, like, so late eighties, early nineties compared to all those other systems. So this is a, you know, a newer branch of, you know, medicine, and it isn't actually um, something that's, that's been as well studied. So the cool thing is, is that it's an exciting new area. And that's are these, um, are they do, being discovered in the brain, in the nerves, in the organs? Like, right. where are they being discovered? Yeah, right. Great question. So, um, you know, basically the CB1 receptors are primarily in the, you know, the central nervous system. And the CB2 receptors are spread around the body in um, even just all tissues from muscles to, you know, it's kind of the um, the magic of this discovery is they were like, these receptors are all over the body, but the CB1 receptors are more in the brain and in the actual nerves. That makes sense. But yeah, everywhere. Like, so of course our gut brain, our heart brain have, you know, higher concentration than our toenails, but yeah. So when we're introducing CBD, whatever that is, and we're going to get into it, it's, getting into our bodies and there's our bodies are built to interact with it um in every tissue layer and yes um, that's super interesting yeah so what is it where does it come from well okay so obviously um you know there's this plant called hemp uh and it's been known in many many cultures by different names obviously ganja in one culture marijuana in spanish-speaking cultures um uh here in hawaii pakalolo like there's just a lot of different words for the cannabis containing plants and um and you know just as a quick side note you know the word marijuana has referred to the the cannabis sativa and cannabis indica plants that are containing a high amount of thc which is what gets people high. But this incredible discovery back in the 80s and 90s of our endocannabinoid system encouraged the researchers to study 
this uh, this new cannabinoid they didn't really know about, cannabidiol, CBD, that we're going to talk about, which is a big component in the cannabis plant that doesn't get you high and has all these benefits. So as they grew plants that had a much higher percentage of CBD and a very low percentage of THC, they started having all these breakthrough discoveries like, wow, if we can remove you know, not remove so much chemically, but to, you know, breed the plants and cross. It's an easy plant to cross, uh, crossbreed and hybridize. Um, it's a quick growing, it's a, it's a malleable plant, kind of polar opposite, let's say, of the palm family where they can't crossbreed palms at all. Palms just say, nah, we don't want to do it. But the cannabis plant says, sure, we'll play. So anyway, point is they bred um, a lot of plants to be um, higher in CBD. And they saw all these terrific benefits. And then they said, well, wow, you know, we need, we need to research this more, but it was, it was still under the cloud of illegality. Okay, so, so they're, they're looking at this, this plant um, uh, in the hemp plant in particular, and they're noticing, yes, you can, uh, people will smoke it or ingest it and it does make them high, but there's other things going on just than the THC in the plant. And so right. they start to explore what else is going on and they discover that these uh, uh, CBD molecules, a, variety, a family of them, uh, separate of the THC chemical, yeah. are interacting with our body in a, a lot of beneficial ways. So they look at that um, and they zoom in and when they zoom in, what are they seeing in, in the spectrum of whatever is existing as molecularly? Yeah. So molecularly, the, the THC molecule is really kind of un, almost unimportant compared to the rest of the components in, you know, the cannabis plant. So for instance, um, especially we will we'll get into it later, maybe, but full spectrum CBD that includes all the components in the plant, except the plant fibers, of course, um, is by far the best. So full spectrum is going to include, of course, the, you know, the, the various flavors of CBD, because there's sub, you know, we don't want to get into all the chemistry of it, but there's a bunch of different versions of CBD, A, G, D, there's a bunch of sub subsets, but let's just call it the you know, the majority of what is in the plant is going to be the cannabinoids, terpenes, which is what gives it the smells and flavors, but has all these other tertiary effects. And then chlorophyll, which mm -hmm. we all know is that green substance in plants that's super important to for, you know, human life. So there's all these other components and THC is typically a really small component, except when they breed the plants for high THC. So people get really, really high. So that's, there's this ama amazing spectrum. Again, all the cannabinoids, the terpenes and the chlorophyll have this full spectrum effect, this what's known as the entourage effect. And they're all interacting with our bodies in unique ways but especially the, the cannabinoids and so yeah and we know that there's uh right now uh, a phenomenal amount of research going on um i did a search just this morning before we hopped on just to see how much research is going on and the huge database you know pubmed um, with that uh, green med info front end on it you know showed 920 uh, research paper abstracts currently searchable right now on the web. 920. Wow. But what's bizarre is that if we look at the, you know, all the things uh, it nu in the nutraceutical realm, in the, you know, nutrition science that are important to human health, we're first going to look at, well, what's the, what's the nutrient makeup? What's the protein? Are there healthy omega-3 fats? You know, what's the fiber? What's the vitamins, the minerals, right? You know, we're going to look at all of those kind of, you know, macronutrients and micronutrients. And people say, well, you know, so is CBD like a superfood that has like, is jam-packed with vitamins and minerals? 
no. We're like, no, what do you mean? Like, well, how does it work? What does it do? And yeah, then why would I get it? Yeah, especially from Yeah, why would I get it? It's this see, and it's so it looks like it could be a scam, you know, when you look at it just kind of like through the normal lens of basic nutrition. But that's because we're not we're we're not acknowledging the central role in human health of the autonomic nervous system and, and other things you and I have talked about on these podcasts and all this other research that's been going on now for decades about the role of the autonomic nervous system, you know, in terms of all other aspects of health. You could say that our autonomic nervous system is the foundation of health. It's like the foundation of a house. If your autonomic nervous system is messed up, you're going to have a bunch of problems and not just stress related, but that's the biggie. So, so is all this kind of one of the main, this is perhaps the, the central reason why you would consider bringing CBD into your life is to work with the autonomic nervous system. Correct. Right. So when you look at the list of benefits for CBD, like, you know, I used one of the large language models, um, AI model software just this morning also just to kind of do a quick review to see if I asked it you know to show me the top 50 benefits of CVD and uses of CVD I figured all right when somewhere on this list of 50 it's going to start doing duplicates and overlaps mm -hmm. and I thought you know maybe at number 20 or 30 it was going to no it rattled off 50 unique separate uses and benefits, you know, in a matter of a few seconds. And it was like, how is that possible for something that has, is not jammed full of vitamins and minerals? Well, it's because our endocannabinoid system is almost like a parallel track in our nervous system. Like we said, all these receptors are found, the CBD, CB1 receptors are just all jammed into our main central nervous system and the cb2 receptors are all over our body from our skin to our tongue to our heart everywhere basically mm -hmm. so whether we're taking cbd for you know sleep issues or migraines or tourette syndrome or seizures in kids or like there's a really potent benefits that people are using CBD for and and it can get hypey we know but there's nothing quite like this in the nutraceutical space it's not a superfood it's not a normal nutritional supplement it's not a pharmaceutical it is kind of its own unique being mm-hmm and it's really related around the autonomic nervous system and the the uh, receptors in our body that are built to receive it. And so people can ingest it in a variety of ways, but when they introduce it into the system and uh, into our systems and it hits our bloodstream and it floats around our body, how does it know where to, what is it doing and how does it know where to go and uh, <laughs> what's going on in there? That's a great question. So be so our, our bodies actually, um, you know, this endocannabinoid system that we have, it actually creates endogenous, uh, you know, cannabinoids. Um, one is the, the really amazing one called anandamide. And ananda is the Sanskrit word for joy or bliss or flow. And so anandamide is this unique molecule that was discovered in the 90s when they were discovering these, you know, these, uh, these receptors in the body. So back to your question, how does it work? Like, how does it work? And how does it know where to go? Well, it's kind of like other nutrients in that sense, the body's opportunistic, when there's nutrients flowing through our bloodstream, uh, and the blood flow is going past, say, the cells in the liver, right? The liver says, oh, I could use a little protein. I could use a little healthy fats. I could use a little bit of, you know, this vitamin or that mineral. And so the body, the cells basically uptake what they need. So these receptors 
are almost like a little open port and a, like a little boat can go in, you know, to that little port, so to speak, or that slip, right? And so what's interesting, and I'm glad you asked this because there's a really cool reason that CBD also happens to miraculously prevent pot overdose. You know, people will eat an edible of some kind of, you know, marijuana product and they'll accidentally take too much and have anxiety or they'll think something they're you know they'll have a real pro i forget what it's called but kind of a you can do a bit of an overdose on um but if someone has taken high quality cbd oil first and kind of filled a bunch of those receptors especially you know like with cbd that's soothing which is you know we know cbd is generally soothing to the nervous system and helps to regulate it those receptors are already full of the of the better cannabinoid cbd and the thc molecule can't go in and swamp the nervous system because thc is a rare molecule so the reason people get overly stoned on marijuana nowadays is they bred the plant for excess thc yeah. and that isn't natural. Our bodies evolved for thousands of years, you know, to be extremely sensitive to the rare molecules like, like THC. So CBD has that, you know, just like anything else, it has that benefit. It can just float through the system and the cells will uptake what they need. So if we're stressed, anxious, um, worried, uh, we haven't had enough healthy movement during the day. We haven't you know, had time to meditate or do yoga, tai chi, qigong, walk in nature, all those things that help to modulate and regulate our nervous system in a good way. Um, because our schedule's busy, we're driving the kids or duh, duh, whatever it is. CBD is a really great ally. It isn't a panacea and we shouldn't use it as a crutch. We want to do all those other healthy lifestyle things. Um, and perhaps incorporate you know, good quality CBD to help have the tone of our autonomic nervous system be optimal. But but why? Why would someone take CBD? You mentioned some of the things on the surface layer, but like, what are people using it for? And what are they finding that it's uh, helping upgrade about their life? Okay, well, so number one tends to be the pain relief uh, spectrum because you know let's face it pain really gets our attention um whether it's back pain whether it's you know an acute pain like wow i just i just bumped my arm against you know the the, the railing uh you know in you know on my stairs ow that hurts i might rub some high quality cbd oil right what there is would you even put it there if there was a scab or a, uh, some cutting too? Uh, not in an open uh, wound sense, no. Only something that's already closed up. Yeah, good point. But also a little bit of sunburn. Um, so the second one after pain relief is inflammation is the second, you know, like most popular is both localized inflammation and systemic inflammation. Um, so for my case, um, I use CBD quite a bit because partly because I have a, a fast paced wiry nature and I'm not as naturally calm and slow paced as some people. So, you know, for my constitution, CBD is a, a five day a week, you know, ally. And even though I do a lot of healthy activity to keep my nervous system modulated, I notice that most afternoons a little bit of cbd is going to be helpful internally you mean, you mean internally yeah internally. so you, you do it topically when needed but you also do around five days a week internal ingestion of a cbd oil yes and of course our uh, the only one i ever use is ours because you know of the way we we yeah. make it you know and we'll get into that later if we want i don't necessarily need to pitch ours however but i also use it five to six days a week in small amounts on my face, just as a um, 
an adjunct to other, you know, sunscreen. Like I don't ever use any lotions ever. I just never put anything on my skin at all. I pretty much just eat really healthy from the inside and let the body systemically, you know, bring the, the oils to my skin, except I use our CBD on my face. I'll put one drop on my nose, one drop on my cheek here, one drop here, one drop on my forehead and just wipe that in. So it's, you know, it's expensive stuff to use like to, you know, in a large amount, mm -hmm. but I will put it on as a preventative. So let's say I'm going out in the sun for X amount of time and I'm probably going to be wearing a hat. I'm not silly. You know, I'm here in the tropics of Hawaii, but I... I find that it's the first thing I want to put on. And then if I know I'm going to be swimming in the ocean, obviously I'm not wearing a hat swimming in the ocean, then I might put on a little bit of a natural sunscreen in addition. But um, my main use topically is a chronic old injury in my low back where I will wipe, you know, like I'll put as many as 15 to 20 drops on my sacrum area and that's super helpful you and, know as a topical and i'm understand am i understanding this correctly too in that um cbd can be helpful for both acute situations as well as chronic situations because it can work with the tone of the autonomic nervous system to help regulate proper immune response and infl in uh, chronic inflammation responses, but it also can work for bruises or sunburns, yeah. um, pre and post skin things. So there's an acute and a chronic approach that CBD helps. Yes, yes exactly. Great points. And I didn't even continue on. You were asking me kind of from a big picture meta standpoint, what, mm -hmm. why people would take it. Um, so first we hit pain relief. Second was inflammation. Third is just mental health, you know, issues in general from anxiety to nervousness, to seizures, convulsions, epilepsy, Tourette's syndrome. And speaking of seizures, here's an interesting little side note. Yesterday when I was grocery shopping, um, I was almost done. I was ready to head to the checkout. Um, and all of a sudden, I come around a corner and I see a lady um, holding her phone and, and, and her face was kind of contorting a little. And she was, she was looking anxious and she was breathing strangely. And I said, are you all right? Uh, just, I don't know this person. And she couldn't even reply to me. She was like having a seizure apparently. And it took me a minute to realize what it was, I helped her to, you know, get down to the floor and, called an employee, you know, that I saw coming by. And anyway, um, like of all things, the day before we're recording, you know, mm -hmm. this, well, seizures and epilepsy, epileptic fits are a hugely researched area for CBD. And the only um, CBD isolate, which is not full spectrum, but where a pharmaceutical company um, got an FDA approval for isolating the CBD molecule down to an isolate for an actual prescription pharmaceutical is only approved for epileptic fits, uh, or at least that's how it started. Maybe since then, it's been six years since they got that, you know, uh, approval as a pharmaceutical grade version of CBD um, is primarily for, you know, seizures, convulsions, epileptic, you know, fits both chronic and, you know, um, kind of spontaneous. So, yeah. But anyway, on down the other list of, you know, things uh, from skin disorders to um, the chronic diseases from cancers, schizophrenia, even diabetes um, is being researched for both preventing, you know, diabetes from, you know, onset, adult onset, uh, but also just moderating it when it's already, uh, you know, there multiple sclerosis, um, gosh, so many things. I mean, the list we could, we could spend a couple of hours talking about how it's being researched and used. And there's, thousands and thousands of anecdotal cases of people finding benefits from it.
So. And not to make it seem uh, panaceic, uh, but it just it really speaks to um, when you focus and work on the autonomic nervous system, you really are affecting the whole system. And since it works so well in the 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 one and two receptors to help tonify the, the autonomic nervous system, you really can use CBD for a variety of um, ailments. Exactly. And so going kind of back to the first topic of, you know, main benefits that people are finding in the pain relief category, um, we talked about, you know, kind of internal, just general pain relief, taking it internally from head to foot. Um, and then we also talked a little bit about topical um, and topically works for both, as you put it, chronic and acute issues, right? So, uh, you know, a recent bruise or an injury that's temporary, but also ongoing. So I'll, I'll use it for something, you know, like if I overdo it exercising, you know, um, I might use it there also, but I, I tend to use it a little more for that chronic pain, but, you know, joints, muscles, tendons, bruises, but just sunburn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cancer pain, arthritis pain, post-surgery pain. But one of the most exciting things that's being researched and it's being used, not just researched, is that morphine doses, people with serious pain, morphine doses, uh, one study showed that they could reduce the morphine dose by three times. Like, like you could, you, they could prescribe it was, uh, excuse me, 3.6 times less. That's 360% less morphine if it was being used in combination with CBD. So that could prevent someone from getting an opioid addiction, you know, after a surgery or a big accident where normally they might prescribe really large doses of opioids for weeks and then people are kind of hooked and then they go through this terrible process of trying to get off the opioids, right? We know about the applications. Yeah. 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 So that's one of one that's just like really cool, but there's other places where they're using it synergistically with other, you know, um, pharmaceuticals that have side effects. Oh yeah. That's the other thing we've got to talk about. There's so little side effects with CBD. Why? Because it's a naturally occurring substance in nature and why it's actually working holistically with this foundational layer called our nervous system. It's so, it's, it's literal and symbolic in the fact that our bodies have cannabinoid receptors. It just seems like such a an easy equation that we're built to receive this type of a thing in the right ways. And of course, in the, um, the right times, but it's invariable in its ability to help people in a variety of ways. And we haven't touched on my favorite use of it yet, which is sleep. I yes. it is unbelievably powerful for helping myself as well as some people who are close to me who've really suffered from some serious insomnia for years and they will take this um this is their number one go-to um for helping their sleep you know what me too um when i i'll rem i remember when let's see it must have been around nine years ago when i was first reading some early research about cbd and I was pretty skeptical because it, you know, I'm so, so geeky and sciencey around, you know, the nutritive con content and, you know, looking at superfoods and, you know, like we know superfoods are all upside and no downside, right? You know, they're packed with nutrients, but they're not loaded with sugars or they're packed with good nutrients and they don't have bad fats, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So I was like, well, CBD is, you know, how could this, this is getting, you know, like, how can it, this, and then I learned, you know, that it was working with the nervous system. And I was at the big, uh, nutraceutical, uh, you know, uh, trade show that happens down in Anaheim, Southern California every year. And there's tens of thousands of attendees. And there was one little booth where they had samples of their cbd oil and 
I I bought one of their sam they it was so new and in such tiny quantities that they weren't giving out free samples like all these other booths where they're giving you free power bar, you know, healthy candy bars and, you know, healthy popcorn with, you know, whatever on it. But I, I got this sample and I was like, wow, this is immediately helping my sleep be better. Cause I was on the road and I was traveling. So yeah, uh, it was like, that was one of the first things that really landed for me personally. Well, maybe uh, we can dive into a short exploration of what the whole, what the hype around the word spectrum is, like full spectrum. And oh, yeah, what, good point. what does that actually mean? And why does everyone say they're full spectrum? And why is that not true? Well, okay. So obviously, you know, profit is, you know, kind of the big thing in the business realm. And you know, the nutraceutical realm is not much different than any other business realm. And so, um, how do I put it? Uh, people bend the rules, uh, to put it mildly. Um, but here, let's just zoom out and explain, you know, so you've got the cannabis plant, right? And it contains these, you know, this, this collection of cannabinoids that we've talked about from CBD, A, B, you know, through all down into like CBD, G, et cetera. So there's this, this collection of cannabinoids, right? There's the terpenes and there's the chlorophyll. And then there's the fibrous part of the plant. Well, if you're, if you're doing a proper extraction with organic alcohol, because alcohol is the only um, extraction medium that will extract both the polar and bipolar elements. So if you want to get everything out of the cannabis plant that's beneficial and leave the fibrous material behind, you've got to start with alcohol, right? You know, and it's going to be 190 proof, meaning 95% pure alcohol for doing the extraction, right? That's going to give you, you know, this, this solution with everything that is helpful, beneficial, medicinal, et cetera. Right. But that's way more expensive. And then you've got to reduce all that alcohol, most of that alcohol out. Right. And, you know, bring it down to something that's a little more manageable into, you know, the essential oils that are that are suspended in that solution of alcohol. Well, people, you know, did, did that at the beginning, just like they would do with tincturing up other herbs, you know, classic herbalism has used alcohol to extract from oily things like that. Other plants, you're fine to do a water extract, but when it's a very resinous, thick, oil substance that you're extracting from the plant, you've got to use alcohol, right? If you want to get the whole thing, but the people discovered, you know, in the kind of factory extract world, that if you used gases like CO2 or methane gas, you know, they could extract out of these resonance plants faster and cheaper with certain gases, you know, these industrial gases. Um, so the most common way that, you know, CBD that you're going to find in most health food stores, grocery stores, mini marts at the gas station or online will be extracted with CO2. Roughly 80 something percent will be extracted with CO2. And that won't be a full spectrum because it doesn't extract both pol all the polar and non-polar bipolar elements, but it's way, way cheaper. And so, and it still gives some benefit, like just to be fully, you know, transparent, and honest, like um, the way we do it is more expensive. It's worth it. If you come to the conclusion that you're worth it and, you know, CBD is useful to you, maybe not everybody it's worth it. So anyway, um, a little bit of the CBD is extracted still with methane, which leaves, you know, toxic, you know, residues in it. Um, and so it's, it's a mixed bag. And then there's the whole issue of 
how were the plants grown, mm -hmm. right? How were the flowers, you know, harvested? Because these are flowers. And frankly, if you've grown this plant, it's a pretty sacred being. And it, it like all plants, it ought to be respected and honored and treated the way we would want to be treated, right? And, and so anyway, um, small batch, alcohol extraction creates a full spectrum, right? But then there's spagyric version, which is like uh, just all the things we just talked about. Organ you start with organic alcohol and that's done at a low temp, right? So you aren't, you know, wiping out, you know, many of the important components and the enzymes, et cetera, and the chlorophyll. You're not damaging the molecular structure by doing it at lower temps. And then you're, you know, you're concentrating off a bunch of that alcohol and you're concentrating the oils. And then you've got this, remember, you've got all this plant fiber left behind, this mash, this green, greenish brown, like mass of plant material that has been left behind. Most people just throw that away. But if you incinerate it, lab quality incineration down to its actual just mineral salts, what's left when you incinerate that mash are mineral salts, basically. And those are very alkaline on the acidic alkaline spectrum. When you add those back into the CBD oil, that con those concentrated, it's a basically kind of a white powdery ash. When you add those back in, it does this, this chemical process called decarboxylation that every other CBD has to be done with high heat, mm -hmm. anywhere from 225 to 350 degree heat. But the way we do it, you know, with spagyric, it's obviously way more time consuming and expensive to do these other steps, but it does low temperature decarboxylation. So for those who are geeky and like this kind of thing, mm -hmm. it's pretty, it's, it's the way to go. Yeah. So, and, and because of all of that process, it's capturing the whole plant, the whole flower into its oil form. And it's even including the mineral salts um, that yes. were burned out of the fiber to be returned to it. Right. And so why is that beneficial? You know, why is the entourage effect when we take something where it has all the components of the plant? Because we evolved for thousands and thousands of years, eating, consuming, and being, you know, interacting with these plants in their whole form with all the components, not just see a CBD isolate or not just this one fake vitamin that's been isolated, but a collection, kind of a package deal, if you will. So maybe we can flesh out um, what is the entourage effect and what's going on both in the entourage of chemicals that are, are in uh, working with our autonomic nervous system and our cannabinoid receptors, but also beyond just the chemicals in our bloodstream um, into lifestyle and things like that. Okay, that's, yeah, yeah, good to flesh it out um, broader. Yeah, so because we've touched on the fact that we've evolved over all these, you know, thousands of years to experience nutrients and these these beneficial components and and uh, plant medicine, so to speak, you know, in a as holistic a form as possible, because we just, we just don't know all, all that much about all the quote, sub components, you know, reduction of science has been great for developing chemicals for better paint for the outside of your house, right? But when it comes to the human body, it's a complex biological system. And ideally, we are going to thrive off of, you know, more full spectrum entourage effect kind of nutrients. So, you know, do we really want to eat, you know, just this extract of beets or something, or just eat beets? Do we want to eat an extract of green leafy vegetables or eat those vegetables? No, we want to eat them because they've got all kinds of components from fiber to protein to fats to, you know, you name it, chlorophyll. So um, reduction of science is not ideal, you know, 
for the most part for things we ingest. So when it, CBD, we're talking, we want all the components from the, all the, all the cannabinoids in the plant and the terpenes and the chlorophyll, right? So we are going to get the maximum benefit. Um, but then as you put it, like what else is synergistic with that? If we broaden out that, like, okay, um, we touched on it earlier. We don't want to use CBD as a crutch or a panacea, right? It doesn't, it, it's not optimal. It's almost like trying to make a substance work too hard. Like people who take massive amounts of turmeric to reduce their systemic inflammation and they don't reduce the junk food in their diet which is perhaps three-fourths of the issue. And they're trying to just take turmeric pills right, mm. to, to do all their work. It's, it, and then they're like, ah, it doesn't work that great. It works a little bit, right? So what's synergistic? Healthy movement, you know, of all kinds, especially movements that make us happier. So whether that's walking a dog or whether that's, you know, running in nature walking on the beach, walking in the forest, or walking around your house doing a Buddhist-style walking meditation, or long, slow breathing exercises, Tai Chi, Qigong, yoga, right? You know, one of the key things we all hear in yoga classes, you know, is to match our breath with our movement, right? And don't be doing, you know, a yoga routine so fast and vigorous that we lose our, you know, our synergy with our breath. So the breathing is so important. And um, what else? Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting a few things. Help me brainstorm this. Well, you know, it reminds me of something you said in an earlier and separate conversation where um, uh, CBDs can be expensive. And so people will avoid them. Um but that's right. that's not the the greater point. The greater point is is learning to work with your autonomic nervous system. So if cost of CBD or uh, tolerance or getting tested for THC, any of these are an issue, you can still work with your and you should be, in my opinion, working with your autonomic nervous system. And there's a variety of ways to do that. So you're talking about mm -hmm. the walking and breathing and the unification of the breath and the movement of body. You can do it all day, every day. And so I don't know if there's anything you want to dive into in particular that is working with the autonomic nervous system in a similar synergistic way that the CBD could be as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's everything is interacting with everything. Like, so sleep is both, you know, can be a vicious cycle of lower and lower quality sleep or a virtuous cycle. So like the, the better our sleep gets, the less CBD we might want to be taking in the afternoon and the evening. And by the way, with CBD dosing, we haven't even talked about that. Mm. Um, there's a lot of things, you know, where a little is good and more is better to the point, a point, And then you hit that point of diminishing return. And CBD is really intriguing is that you want to take the absolute minimum that is effective. It actually nothing there's like almost no benefit of taking twice as much as you need like you might get a five percent benefit so because it's it especially you know ultra high quality cbd like we make you know is unfortunately you know quite a bit more expensive so i would say people on a budget definitely use the least you possibly can and if you have to buy the junk cbd it's still going to give you like 30% of the benefit of good CBD because there's some of the components are there, but mainly, um, you know, get good sleep, like do all these healthy movements. But a lot of it is also just don't over schedule. Don't be rushing around all the common sense things we know to improve the tone of our autonomic nervous system, right? Oh, more pleasant music. Um, maybe for some people who are sensitive, avoid really stimulating movies at night or let alone the news, um, get off devices earlier in the evening, like do, you know, pick your, your blissipin, so to speak around, 
your digital sunset, as some people say, you know, whether that's seven o'clock, eight o'clock or what, you know, but not on devices and screens, you know, like right up till going to bed. Like the, a lot of those kind of common sense yeah. things that people are, yeah. Just looking at the other factors that affect the autonomic nervous system and working with those as well. Yeah. Um, so part of the reason that, uh, well, the reason that humans uh, work so well is be- with CBD is because of our um, cannabinoid receptors. And it's, mm-hmm. am I correct in understanding that mammals in general have? Yes, all mammals. So that means um, uh, that's why there's some buzz around people giving their pets CBD. Um, people wonder if they can give their children CBD, you know, who can take yeah. it and how can we take it? Yeah, great question. Um, it's really one of the beautiful things um, that's something that's so beneficial and frankly, fairly potent um, for a lot of people has so few side effects. Um, so yeah, you know, the, you know, who can use it? Uh, anybody. Um, and, you know, you can't really overdose on it. Like when people take too much, um, it's like people get a mild headache. Um, typically there's a, you know, nobody develops a big, well, okay. If you're taking a huge amount of junk CBD that had a lot of toxins in it, or, you know, just, we know it's, it's not full spectrum. So the body is kind of rejecting and having to actually process the excess. But um, for instance, they did a quality study recently um, of 84 different uh, CBD products and over a fourth of them just simply contained less actual cannabinoids than the label stated. They were cheating. So, you know, over 25% were cheating on that. Um, And out of the 84, 18 of them contained excess THC, which brings up this whole question, like, um, you know, for some people, CBD that contains excess THC is a real issue, whether they're getting drug tested at work and they're, you know, like they're blown out of the water on their, their job because this, they were innocently consuming junk CBD that wasn't, you know, below the proper threshold. However, having said that, some people with sleep issues do well with uh, CBD combined with a little bit of actual um, THC containing product, like micro dosing THC after. Now, this is my hack and I'll just, this is just me. But a lot of people have been experimenting with this and you can find some other, you know, decent material on the internet amidst the junkie, you know, info, but CBD 20 to 30 minutes before using some THC containing, you know, quote, marijuana, whether that's smoking one small bowl of a THC containing, you know, product or uh, taking a small amount of an edible, whether that's, you know, whatever your format is, but that can be helpful. But for a lot of people, they are avoiding all THC. And so it's really important to, you know, have a trusted source. Um, THC, like we said earlier, really rare molecule. The human body is really sensitive to it. And it it just a little is good and a lot is terrible in my opinion. But anyway, there's also, um, uh, you know, just like you do not want to be giving children uh, bad CBD that has, ex- you know, is exceeding the THC threshold of 0.03%, you know. Uh, so it's it's a really, really low threshold to qualify as, you know, hemp-based CBD. So yeah, anyone can take it. Kids, pets, just, you know, start really, really small. And frankly, with adults, start really, really small. And if you get a benefit from just taking four drops, great. You're going to save money and and time, you know. So, uh, you know, that's what I would say. Anyone should, could experiment with it. Beautiful. So um, maybe we can dive into our products specifically just for um, closing and just why we offer a variety of uh, concentrations. 
Yeah, good point. So um, my partner Bronwyn uses our low concentration topically in in good amounts. It's a lot cheaper, and so she'll she'll put the one we call five hundred, you know, which just means five hundred milligrams per one ounce bottle, and she'll use that, you know, more generously um, topically, right? But it, we designed that one primarily for pets and children or very sensitive adults, maybe adults who are, you know, very low body weight or just budget, you know, works great. And then our other, our higher potency, which we call 1500, you know, because it's 1500 milligrams of, of the CBD, the cannabinoids per ounce. Um, and of course I will address uh, some people, you know, find ours, a little too strong a taste at first they're not used because you know if they've tried you know other cbds that have been filtered out and there's no chlorophyll and there's no terpenes um you know depending on you know like obviously we're full full spectrum and then there's people claiming to be full spectrum because they're partial spectrum at 70 percent like co2 extractions or something um and then there's then there's the isolates that are, you know, really, really. And they're packed full of, sometimes they're delivered in very sugary ways. Oh, right. There's all the junk that goes along, like, especially, you know, whether it's gummies or whatever, you name it. And a lot of the CBD is not properly uh, tested for toxins. I mean, the flowers alone are not grown organically. Um, it's not extracted with organic alcohol, et cetera, like that. So yeah, we have, but that's why we do, um, two different concentrations and all of it is, is made the exact same way, you know, small batch spagyric extraction with those mineral salts added back in to do the low temperature decarboxylation, as opposed to the heat based decarboxylation that all CBDs are, you know, are being done with. So beautiful. Well, I, that pretty much sums it up. Um, Today, we got to dive into CBD and what it is and why it's good for us and why our biological systems are actually built to receive it. And we've been in relationship with CBD for thousands and thousands of years. And it's the reason that we are, it's part of the reason we're biologically structured the way that we're structured. Um, it can be used for a variety of different things from pain to sleep, um, et cetera. And uh, there's a very big difference that's important to focus in on between the types of full spectrum or claim to be full spectrum CBDs versus um, spagyric extraction like we use. So it's worth researching and educating yourself a little bit on that. And you can do more on our website about that as well. Yeah. And uh, that's all I've got. Anything else from you? No, just uh, just our usual parting comment of just wanting to send lots of love and light to everyone and blessings on your journey to maximum health and well-being hope you're just optimizing your lives and if we can be a part of your life thank you very much